We're here with Daniel Harris and his film, Wait, I'm a Racist. Tell us what you can about your inspiration for this film. Well, the movie was actually, I, I wrote at least part of the script uh, a number of years ago. And, and then it kind of got shelved because it didn't really seem to be going anywhere in my head until uh, just as a country we've had an interesting past couple of years um, with race relations, um, which weren't that pleasant. So I just kind of revisited the work and then things started to click in terms of the story and me being able to get the full story arc in there that was missing from before. Uh, so I just sort of dusted it off, uh, kind of showed the script around, and uh, we got the ball rolling. So what was your original inspiration? There, I, I, I don't know if I can remember what the original inspiration was. I think it was, I mean, it all kind of had to go back to uh, race relations, in, especially in terms of from a white perspective, because that's... It's something that you don't really get too often other than the really uh, negative, I guess you could say, uh, white point of views on, on, on race relations. But mainly for me it was just sort of, um, you know, if you look at, if you ask a group of, of, of white people how have race relations improved since the civil rights movement in the 50s and 60s, you know, they'll say it's completely fine and you get a completely different perspective from uh, the black community. And there's such a disconnect there and I thought that white people tend to be so clueless when it comes to racism and its existence, like some people don't even believe it even exists anymore, that there was something amusing about it, uh, which is why uh, a dark comedy kind of came out of the idea of making a movie about a white person who is completely out of touch with um, her, the idea of racism because she's lived in a world where it doesn't affect her and so she thinks it doesn't exist because you know, as there's a part in the movie where someone says, a white person says, no one's ever been racist to me, and it's sort of swung from there. So have you had audience reviews? So, yeah, um, this, is, uh, this is not the first uh, screening of it, and it's been really, really positive so far uh, from, I guess, you know, both sides of the aisle, if there's, that's the way to put it. I think um, the... Uh, the, the black audiences seem to take to it to very very well, um, which is which is a good thing, um, mainly because it acknowledges the existence of racism and systemic racism. It 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 points the finger at certain things that you know people like myself, you know, heterosexual white male can kind of take for granted on a daily basis, uh, because I live in a country that really likes to white heterosexual males. I mean, even in 2016. Um, society deems me to be at the top, uh, which is unfortunate, obviously, and, and we're having a lot of discussion in this country about how to change that or at least acknowledge it, and the, the first step is admitting there is a problem. So that's what this movie kind of does. It's a character who takes the first step in admitting there is a problem. What other projects do you have in the work? So uh, this was one of two... I made this simultaneously with another short film, which is actually um, a thriller and war. It's a complete departure from a dark comedy. And that was made uh, as sort of a, a proof of concept film for a feature length screenplay that I wrote. So we'll hopefully get the ball rolling and start drumming up some interest over this next uh, festival season for uh, a feature. Great. We look forward to that one. Uh, any tips for filmmakers? Any tips for filmmakers? Well, um, the the great thing about being a filmmaker today is that access to the technology is so easy. I mean, um, DSLRs have made filmmaking really easy. Uh, there's lots of really cheap gear out there nowadays. And when it comes to learning how to be a filmmaker, you can go to places like YouTube where there's so many tutorials about how to handle editing software, how to do color correction, how to properly light a scene that you can pretty much treat YouTube as a film school, so there's really nothing kind of holding you back in the digital age. Well, thank you so much, Daniel, for bringing you for your film me. to yeah. NIF.